Well, boys and girls, it seems like the inevitable has finally happened. At the time of this recording, the 3DS and Wii U eShop were announced to be closing in March 2023, with payment methods announced to be closing even earlier than that. So now I figure it's a good time to talk about games that will be losing in the closure of the 3DS eShop, as well as games that are going to be harder to get a hold of without spending an arm and a leg. Unless, you know, you're okay with or familiar with Yarhar Hoeing. Now I want to talk about the 3DS eShop because I feel like I have a lot more experience in that than I do the Wii U eShop. And I figure the only one capable of giving justice to the topic of the Wii U eShop would be Scott the Waz anyway. Ah! Now the first thing we're going to talk about are the 3DS eShop exclusives that we're going to be losing. And I'm going to be upfront and honest with you, I haven't really played a whole lot of the eShop exclusives. You what?! I know, I know, fake fan, all that jazz. I just want to make sure I'm up front with you guys whenever I'm talking about them. Now the first game we're going to be talking about is a bit of a pioneer on a 3DS eShop, and it's called Pushmo, developed by Intelligent Systems who are best known for Paper Mario and Fire Emblem. Pushmo is a puzzle game that involves pushing or pulling out blocks in order to get to the top to rescue trapped children. This game has over 250 puzzles and the means of creating your own puzzles to share with your friends. I've never played this one myself, but I have heard a lot of good things about it. And you know it looked pretty cute and charming just from a glance. This game of course would spawn off three more sequels that would build off the formula. Those three sequels are also going away when the eShop ends, by the way. Next game I want to mention is Sakura Samurai Art of the Sword. This one's a bit of an oldie but goldie and one I've actually played. The plot pretty much boils down to your lone samurai on a quest to save the princess. It has you going through various different levels, taking on different kinds of baddies and bosses. The game is sort of like Punch-Out in the way, in that it emphasizes dodging and counterattacking at the right time. This is one of the 3DS eShop titles that I was pretty sad that I never got a sequel, because Punch-Out, but you're a samurai on a huge adventure is just genuinely a very cool idea. And then we have Dylan's Rolling Western, a series that has been on the 3DS eShop since the beginning, and practically the end. Gameplay involves gathering resources so you can build up defenses for your town to protect them from these rock monster things called Groks. You can also fight the Groks head on with Dylan with the town defenses kind of thinning their numbers. I've never played any of the three Dylan games that came out. They were always interesting, but never enough for me to go out of my way to buy them. It doesn't help that all the games have relatively mixed reviews. Whether you feel these games are worth playing is entirely up to you. But hey, at least Dead Heat Breakers got a physical release in Europe and Japan, so that's not going to be totally gone. We have another puzzle title named Quetzal's Corridors. This game involves you matching Tetris-like pieces with holes in the wall in an Aztec kind of setting. Now, I've never played this game either, but I remember it sticking out in my mind for a long time for some reason. But even now, it still looks like it could be a fun time. You know, if you're a puzzle guy anyway. Now, the next game I'm talking about is a little RPG series called The Dinpa Man. Developed by Genius Sonority, the guys responsible for various different Pokemon spin-offs, these games involve you using your 3DS camera near Wi-Fi spots or on QR codes to find these little guys called Dinpa Man. You capture them and then you can use them as party members when exploring dungeons. I have like zero experience with this series. I've seen it on the eShop plenty of times and I've always heard people talk about it saying it was really good, but admittedly it was never really enough to make me bite the bullet to get it. I recommend just looking up gameplay of it for yourself just to see if it's up your alley or not. The next game that's up is a little game called Harmonite. Developed by the minds behind the main series Pokemon games, Game Freak, Harmonite is a rhythm platformer that uses just two buttons for jumping and thwacking to the beat. Now this is one of the games that I actually do own. While the game is charming and there's nothing really wrong with it, I did find the gameplay a tad too simple for me, and I never really got around to beating it. But who knows, it could be up your alley if you give it a good look. Next, we have an interesting take on a platformer with Fluidity Spin Cycle, the sequel to a game that came out on WiiWare a couple of years ago. The original had you tilting the Wii remote in order to guide a puddle of water to the end of the level. Spin Cycle involves you tilting the 3DS to guide the puddle of water around. I've never played this one or the original, but from what I looked up about the game, Spin Cycle is essentially just more of the original, beyond Spin Cycle actually having characters now. The reception for Spin Cycle and the original are all pretty good, so it's definitely one of those games you should give a shot. Chibi Robo Photo Finder. The fourth entry in the Chibi Robo series that involves you using your 3DS camera to take pictures of junk. 
I played a demo for it a long time ago, but I'm still kind of having trouble thinking of any good talking points about this game. I've never really had any experience with Chibi Robo before this game. Reviews for it aren't exactly too stellar, but I think I can say that you're not exactly missing much, just from what I tried out with the demo a long time ago. Now let's talk about Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix. Mega Mix is a compilation of older Rhythm Heaven rhythm games, along with a few new ones added to the mix. I own this one, and I could safely say this one's worth getting if you're a rhythm game enthusiast. While Mega Mix did get a physical release in Japan, nowhere else outside of Japan did. Now we're going to talk about two very special eShop exclusive games, Nintendo Badge Arcade and Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Both are free to download, but they have a certain catch to them. With Nintendo Badge Arcade, you're given a limited amount of free tries to use a claw machine to grab these little badges that you can use to decorate your 3DS home screen with. After the free tries, you're obligated to pay a dollar in order to keep trying more for certain badges. Now, I'm not sure how the eShop closure will affect the Badge Arcade or not. Maybe it'll just lock you out of paying, or maybe the whole application will become defunct. Then there's the whole deal with Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Rusty's deal is bargaining with the titular character so that he can lower the prices of his baseball games that he's selling in a shop. And while you can talk Rusty down to a really good price for his games, you can't really ignore the fact that they still cost real money. And assuming you download the game before you actually buy any of Rusty's games, you're just SOL after the closure of the eShop or the ability to add funds. Now I'm just going to list off some games that aren't purely exclusive to the 3DS eShop. While a good chunk of these games have physical copies available in most countries, that doesn't mean they're going to get any cheaper, so it's recommended to download now if you can't find a decently priced physical copy of the game that you want. Now I'm only going to list off games I see getting a spike in price during the eShop's closing period or after. I can see Kid Icarus Uprising having a huge spike in worth after the closure of the eShop, since it's already hard enough to find a relatively decent copy used for under 40 bucks. Ever Oasis is one of those games that came out relatively late in the 3DS's life cycle, so I can see a spike in price with how few copies are out there. I can see most of the RPGs from Atlas seeing a huge spike in price once the eShop closes. You know, like all the Shimigami Tensei games or Radiant Historia. All the 3DS Professor Layton games that isn't Lady Layton. Some Yokai Watch games, like in particular Yokai Watch 2 Psychic Specters, or the two versions of Yokai Watch Blasters, or Yokai Watch 3. And no doubt the main series Pokemon games on the 3DS are going to start skyrocketing like the ones that came before them. Now on the topic of the DLC. Now while there wasn't many games on the 3DS that implemented DLC in a major way, there are still a few notable examples to talk about. The biggest one being Fire Emblem Fates. While you can purchase both Conquest and Birthright physically, without the eShop there's going to be no means of being able to purchase the third path of Fades, which is Revelation. The only means to play Revelation legitimately is to obtain a copy of the special edition of Fire Emblem Fates, in which the game card comes bundled with Birthright, Conquest, and Revelation. Well, that's hard to find as well as it isn't cheap. While all 3DS Fire Emblem games will essentially be losing DLC, it's still not as bad as essentially losing out on a whole game in DLC form. There's the 3DS Ace Attorney games that will lose out on their special DLC episodes. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS will lose out on all the DLC that you can get for them. Well, I guess it hardly matters since Ultimate exists. But I think the worst thing that we're going to lose out on whenever the eShop closes is the fact you won't be able to get any more of the Street Pass Me Plaza DLC. Though it is 2022, You'd be hard pressed to find anybody carrying around a 3DS in sleep mode for Street Pass. The purpose of this video is that I wanted to give a good idea about what we're losing or what will be affected whenever the eShop does eventually close. So I'm sorry if I didn't cover every game that this potentially affects. But hey, if you actually made it this far in the video, why not leave a comment and tell me what other games are going to be affected by the eShop's closure. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good day, and take care.